I was standing in for dad. My dad was out of town and for, a length, for some length of time. And Tony said he had some plans. He wanted to discuss his development. And uh, I said, sure, I'll meet with you. At what point during that meeting did you realize that this wasn't going to be your, your typical meeting? But fairly early on, uh, he had me lay the plans out on the <coughs> conference table. And, uh, and, uh, and I laid the plans out. I had my back to him. And, and he told me to turn around. I was looking at, a, at his handgun. He had a handgun uh, right at my head. And that was the beginning of, uh, of the whole affair. He used the handgun to have me kneel, kneel on the ground and, and uh, kneel on the, on the floor. And he took my coat off. And uh, then he started explaining to me how he, he took the shotgun out of this, this uh, box he was carrying in and started attaching it to my neck. And, uh, Took him some time to do that. Actually, I said, "I said, Tony, you you don't want to do this, and, and you you can stop this." He says, "No, I'm I'm going to continue." Was he agitated? Was he angry, aggressive at that point? I looked him in the eye, and and I thought to myself, "How can God let a man get this angry?" And I I thought he's he's out of control. And so yes, he was very upset, very disturbed. Uh, very angry, very agitated. I thought I was a dead man. I uh, considered that it, it obviously wasn't going to end well, that I wasn't going to really survive it. And, uh, but I, and I had a little talk with God at that point, and uh, God kind of told me that it was going to be all right. And I, I just going to depend on God, and, and I think uh, from then on I had some peace, really. Did it seem real? I mean, what, 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 what's going through your mind at this point? Now you're outside, it's cold, you're in your shirt sleeves. What, what, what are you thinking? I, uh, well, I was really thinking, and I expressed to Tony that I was, I was very cold. As in fact, I'm, I'm freezing, uh, freezing my butt. Uh, every time I would try to think about getting away from him, uh, he had me convinced that he was in control. I, I didn't have much. I didn't have much thought of escaping or, or, or getting out of it. Although I did. I did think, uh, uh, and I was told afterwards, if I could just got the shotgun to the side of my head, the, the explosion of the gun going off would have probably deafen me. And uh, I had some reasonable thoughts, but. Not a whole lot. He would he would discuss the fact that he probably uh, was this wasn't going to end up well, but it was in a, in a rather normal conversation. He said, "I've really done it this time," and and uh, he even almost expressed some remorse about uh, uh, having us get in that situation. So then he takes you to his apartment. What what's the what's going on inside the apartment? He shifted the shotgun around to where it was right in my face, and he set it on the edge of a table. And we sat at the dining room table. And uh, we started having, uh, early on, he, he said, Dick, we're going we're, we're gonna to have a jury trial, and I'm going to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. And uh, he had a list of file cards. And uh, as I understand later on, there was about 100 questions he had on the file file cards and and uh, he wanted me to answer why this happened why that happened you talked to your wife and your dad I said dad I said uh, we've wronged Chris's I said and we got to do something to make it right and uh, my dad responded we didn't do anything wrong and uh, and Chris's was not listening that was the first conversation but he, he must have seen the look on my face because I thought, Dad, I don't, that's not the answer I was looking for. But I also said uh, to my wife, um, Tony's really a, a good man. He's got a good heart. And he got very agitated at that. He grabbed the phone. He told her, he said, I got a black heart, and I'm this and that and so forth. I'm a, a mean guy.
he used to comment from time to time that, that look at my, how steady my hand is. He said, if you were dealing with somebody else, you'd be a dead man by now. But look, look how steady my hand is. And he put it on the trigger and kind of taunting me in a way. I, I kind of had a sense that we were becoming buddy-buddy about the third day. And uh, I had conversations with him, and, and, uh, and he'd show some remorse. What were you feeling when it was all over and you were free and you were no longer in danger? I think I was in kind of a trance at that point. I don't remember too much. I don't remember too many feelings. Uh, I was obviously, I was somewhat elated that it was, I think I had a little trouble accepting that it was all over, actually. I think it's probably affected my life more than I really think. I, uh, we never know. None of us ever know what's going to happen. Uh, so you just got to really live with it. But uh, I, I certainly have, uh, have been af affected.